Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Sharla, and today we are going to help you get ready to go on vacation this Yay! summer and take the stress out of it, hopefully, because when you're the mom or the dad in some cases, sometimes the planning of the meals and the making of the meals falls on you, and then it can make it not feel so much like a vacation. <laughs> and we don't want that for you. Yeah, um, we camp a lot. Um, and it is a lot of work to go camping and there's ways to make it less work and we're here to show you how. So today we're giving you ideas for things that you can do if you're going on vacation where you can plan ahead. Bring these with you so that you don't have to think about what to make when you're there. You don't have to do a lot of planning or prep and you can sit with your feet up and read a book or if you're more the kind of person that's going to go hike a mountain or do some like extreme sports you can go do that um and listen we're talking about those kinds of vacations where you are doing some of the cooking this is we're not talking about all inclusives we are not talking about a hotel tour in italy we we are talking about you know Vacation on the cheap, where you're still making your own meals, you're getting an Airbnb, or you are camping, and you need to look after yourself in the food department. So if you've been watching our channel for a while, then you know that our family goes to the mountains once a month or so, or once every few months anyway, and so we stay in a place there that has a kitchen. Um, one of our sons is actually living up there in this mountain resort. He's working there, so we love to get to go and see him. And he moves out of the staff residence and into our place when he when we're there because you know the food's better. And although Christy and I made him, we did make meals, him food, and we've made him more this time that I'm bringing for him. So I'm actually leaving tomorrow. Is it tomorrow already? It's tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I just, I, it just hit me. Like I was thinking in two days. No, I'm actually leaving tomorrow uh, to go. And we're not bringing as many kids with us as we usually bring, but we still will have quite a few people to feed. And they're gonna be doing like mountain biking and swimming and hiking. And so they're gonna be really hungry. And so a lot of these are things that I've made to bring with us and some I'm sending camping with my husband. I'm coming home early, I'm not going camping this year, I'm coming to babysit the grandbaby, but I'm a nice wife, and so I'm sending my husband some of the things he's requesting. You don't want your children to start. No, I've heard about the camping trips before I started going, and uh. it's like my sister-in-law's, it's a big, big group that goes camping in my husband's family. There's like between 50 and 80 people that go. And so I had heard rumors of how my kids ate before. It was at everybody going. else's campsites, wasn't it? It was either just hot dogs, sometimes those little box cereals that you pour the milk into oh, but that's special that's camping right? it's fun yeah um but yeah hot dogs or at everyone's everyone yeah. else's campsite they sort of hopped around and got fed by their aunties so this time he's taking some of my freezer meals he's just pillaging my freezer and i'm good with that because that's why they were made is so my family could eat and you're doing some camping trips this year too. We are doing some camping trips this year. Um, I have a fifth wheel holiday trailer, so I have a full kitchen in there. Um, I have a full kitchen, but it's mini. Like I have a fridge and I have a stove and I have a freezer, but they're, they're small size, they're trailer size. But I can still put in, we have some ham and cheese sliders coming up here. I love to take those camping. This is the sliders, the ham and cheese sliders. You can jazz these up if you wanted to and do ham and turkey and, and a little bit of like Havarti and Monterey Jack and make it like a Monte Cristo. But we're just gonna do these our regular self. So you're gonna need the sheet pan of buns. You know, you can go to Costco and you can get a double pack. So there's 24 buns and then you cut them in half. I'm just doing 12 here in the video. We're gonna cut them in half. We're gonna lift the top off like a lid and we're gonna lay out our deli ham. So we just go to the deli and ask for them to slice you some ham. Um, you could do 12 slices, but depending on how big they are, you might only need eight, or you could double them up, make these thick. But then we're gonna add in our cheese. So we can use cheddar or marble, or maybe Swiss goes nice with the ham. Um, and then we're gonna put our lid back on. 
we're going to get some melted butter. We're going to mix in together some mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, poppy seeds, honey, and dried onion flakes. We're going to whisk these all together and then drizzle it nicely over these buns that are in a tray, mind you. Like they're not just sitting in a bag or on your cupboard. You need to have these. They fit nicely in a 9 by 13 pan. Um, they go really nice in the foil tray. We're going to cover that with foil and freeze it. On the day of cooking, now you can cook these from frozen. Actually in that video of me camping a couple of years ago, I had cooked them from frozen and they took a really long time to get to the center. So the outsides are getting super crispy and I'm getting, I think a little bit flustered because mm -hmm. it wasn't cooking fast enough in the center. As a freezer meal cook, I really do prefer to let everything thaw, 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 thaw all the way through because then I can count on the timing instructions more readily. Um, so you just add more time if it's still frozen in the middle. It is okay if you like to wing it like that. I do not. So really it is just, you know, 20 minutes in, in a 350 oven with the foil off. And um, then you take a knife, you cut down in between those buns and you just pull them out and the cheese drizzles. I've said this before, we took them hiking. So I made them and it was a drizzly day and I wrapped them up in a, in a towel and put them on the floor of the truck. And then we went and met our friends for this hike and we hiked around this lake in the mountains and it was beautiful and we got back and I had this mostly still warm pan of hot nice. ham and cheese sliders and they're all like eating their cold wraps <laughs> and their granola bars and, and we're having a picnic at our house. So these are, there's a time and a place and it is outdoors for these. <laughs> and yeah, those are getting brought with me on mm -hmm. our trip uh, because I've got some family members, like extended family, nieces and things like that, that are going to be there as well this time. And so I know that I'm going to end up feeding more than just our family. So this is one that you can feed 12 people with. So yeah, you really can. You may have heard me talk about these before. I'm a fan when we go on these vacations of taking myself some buffalo chicken quesadillas. I mean, some of the other members of my family eat them too, but really they're designed for when I am working and I'm staying there and the rest of them are out having their fun and I have to have lunch and I don't want to feel sorry for myself. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I get to have a treat. This is so wonderful. I get to make some homemade guacamole and I have this indoor herb garden. Oh, uh -huh. that is kind of my pride and joy because I do not have a green thumb. I have a very black thumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is the only thing that I can manage to keep alive. And so I bring some of my cilantro with me to make the guacamole. And I just feel like, you know, those spicy serrano peppers that I stick in there. It's like the best guacamole. And then I can dip these quesadillas in it and I just feel like I'm getting this break. I get to be on vacation even though I'm working. Did I tell you before that when she goes on vacation, she goes by the restaurants that she's <laughs> going to get to go to, that, that where their little mountain place is, there's a limited restaurant. So she just takes it with her. I do. And so... <laughs> All we do to make these is we make some buffalo chicken. So you've got your shredded chicken that's cooked and add some Frank's Red Hot to it. Uh, sometimes I get a little bit fancier and like cook the Frank's Red Hot into the chicken. And you know, sometimes I just add it in later. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to lay some cheese. I like a habanero cheese blend, but you can do a Tex-Mex or you could do really whatever kind of cheese you want, like jalapeno you jack. You could do blue cheese. It's buffalo. You could do blue cheese. Have you never done it? I've never oh. done that. Oh. Well, goals. it might be time. Hashtag quesadilla goals. <laughs> to revamp this recipe. Hmm. Okay. I'm glad I brought it up. That's something to think See, about. See, I can do it too. 
You can. <laughs> you can come up with ideas. She's she's the idea person in the food department. I just know how to cook it really well. And but I can come up with ideas. Yeah. And then you're gonna add so on half of your flour tortilla, you're gonna put your sprinkling of cheese, and then you're just gonna top it with what you like. So your buffalo chicken. I like red pepper. Um, I don't add tomatoes because I do find they get a little mushy in the whole like freezing, thawing, cooking process. But I add some fresh jalapenos, some onion, and other times I have added, you know, played around with different ingredients. But this is sort of where I have boiled it down to is this is my necessary ingredients is the chicken, the cheese, the onions, the jalapenos, and some red pepper. Then you're gonna fold the top half over and you're gonna freeze these flat on your cookie sheet. Once they're completely frozen, you're gonna transfer them to a freezer bag and then you can take them with you on vacation and they can go in the oven or in the skillet. So I have taken these camping. You can easily cook these up in a skillet on your little camp stove or you could probably do them on the campfire. I don't think I have, but. I'll bet you you could. If you have the right kind of skillet to yes. put over your fire, you could. So we're gonna put a video right there. And that is of our last year's camping freezer meals video. Now, two years ago, we did a camping freezer meals video that was like kind of designed for Christy's trailer. And yes. we got a lot of flack. There was a bit of flack. <laughs> they, did, they made fun of me for not really camping. You could hear the chainsaw in the background. We were in the honest to goodness bush, but I was in my trailer. <laughs> and in that video, I think I made the ham and cheese sliders. I, think you I, did. I gave a tour of my trailer. It's pretty good. It's but, a cute video. But it is not, I wasn't, not, I don't cook over a fire. I, we should put that one. Yeah, yeah. But so then last year, we decided we're gonna have a response to that, a kind response by just creating another video of camping recipes where all of those ones can be cooked if you're tenting. Because <laughs> I took them camping with me and I cooked them over a camp stove or over the fire. And actually a lot of them were directly over the fire. So, and I'm not really an outdoorsy girl. <laughs> and I don't really like to camp. But I did it, and I cooked in the wild. <laughs> you did, you cooked in the wild. <laughs> now, we are not um, auditioning for Survivor here. We are not gonna be on Naked and Afraid. We are not going to be starting our own fire with a couple of sticks and stuff. But no. you will eat. But I did start the fire in the video of oh, where I showed yeah, that's them. Right. I even I made the fire, but not with like, not with sticks and not with even flint. I had a fire starter. <laughs> in my camper, my husband has made me a firebox and it has some kindling and some tinder and dryer dryer lint is really good. I do the dryer lint inside the to empty toilet paper rolls. Yes, that works yep. really good. And um, I have matches and newspaper. What else is really good? I went with my son on a survival weekend for school and they used cotton balls dipped in Vaseline. Oh. And they fire right up and they burn for a long time and it's if you cotton balls dipped in vaseline people pack it and if you're out in the bush and, and it's wet they will still burn so there you go um you never know what you're gonna learn on so I, Reels 101. <laughs> I don't so i have a firebox because i'm the fire bug and i like i like to start the fire i'm the one i'm the one okay something i often do that makes it a little bit easier is I will pre-mix some, and now, okay, I know that you can buy a box of pancake mix. I'm, I'm aware that you can buy a <laughs> box of pancake mix, but I don't know what's all in that. So I know it's in my pancake mix. So I will pre-make my pancake mix. And so it's a cup of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of baking powder. That's the ratio. And I mix that all together. And then on the day of cooking, I just scoop out a one cup measuring cup and that's about a cup, right? Cause it's all mixed. And then I add into that a cup, one egg and a cup of milk and um, a little bit of cooking oil and bam, you have pancakes. So it is an easier way to... So you make a whole container of it. So I have, I, I'm like my mother that I keep my containers. Um, so this is a two kilogram peanut butter container. It's the big sucker that you get at Costco, right? 
totally emptied out, totally cleaned out because you don't know, sometimes kids stop by and you're feeding them pancakes. You don't want to be causing an allergy. It is, it is cleaned out. And, and it, I fill it right up and that will last us for the summer because then I only need one or, one or two scoops at a time. I keep with my ratio, make the pancakes, and it's easy, it's healthy, and I'm not standing there. I don't have to take all of those things with me camping. I can just take my mix. That is a very good tip. It is a good tip. I like it. Yeah, we do that a lot. And what is it about camping that, like, at home, my kids can eat cereal every day, and that's okay. We get camping, and suddenly they want the bacon and eggs, and they want the French toast, and they can we have pancakes today? And I'm like, is this the Hilton? Gourmet five-star service. This is the Hilton holiday trailer. <laughs> I think so. They think so anyway. <laughs> so like Christy was saying with the pancakes, breakfasts are one of those things that it seems like when you're on vacation, you want to have like an actual breakfast. Like you don't just want to have the cereal or the thing, the toast like you would at home. You want to like feel like you're on vacation and this is special mm -hmm. and whatever. So for my mountain vacation. I am packing buttermilk waffles. We just made them up just this morning, Christy and I, and it's a recipe I've been using forever. And I've got this awesome waffle maker that makes four at a time. And they're the perfect size to fit in a toaster. So there's a toaster in the kitchen where I'm going. So in the morning, we can just pop one out of the freezer, put it in the toaster and serve it with either some fruit topping and whipped cream or syrup. We're just gonna do syrup because I am simplifying. <laughs> I want some time off too. But the nice thing about these sort of homemade egos, if you will, is you know exactly what's in them and they're nice and homemade, which makes them less expensive too. And you've made them with love. Totally. <laughs> Don't you think you could taste the love in these waffles? So into a large bowl, you're gonna whisk together your flour, sugar, salt, and baking powder. And then um, either in another bowl, you can mix your wet ingredients together or you can put them right on top here. And you can put in some eggs that are lightly beaten, some buttermilk, milk, and melted butter. And then you're gonna mix this, but you don't wanna over mix it. And then you're just gonna put it into your waffle maker and make these up. Now, here is the important step if you're doing these for the freezer, is you wanna lay them on parchment paper flat on a cookie sheet in a single layer and freeze them just as they are. And then once they're frozen, you transfer them to your freezer bag. The reason you do this is so that they don't stick together in the freezer bag and so you will be able to take out one at a time, which makes them perfect for traveling. This next recipe is another grab and go breakfast that's going to be really great to have with you when you're camping or if you are off in some wonderful vacation location and you want to go out hiking and you just want to get outdoors. These are breakfast burritos. You start out with your flour tortilla, you're going to add scrambled eggs, either some bacon or some browned up ground sausage and sprinkle some cheese and a little bit of chopped peppers in there. You're going to roll it up like a burrito, roll it again into a tin foil and then you can add it to your freezer bag. When you go to heat these up, they are very simple to do. You can take the foil off and throw them in the microwave or if you are feeding a crowd, I mean you can do them individually in the oven but something that is nice if you're feeding a crowd, you can put these in a casserole dish, sprinkle some more cheese and maybe some salsa on it and bake it in the oven. And then you would just eat it like mm, manicotti or like a casserole. And it's really, really delicious. Yeah, this is a good one for like you were saying, those hiking days or if you wanna grab and go breakfast, then you can easily use something like this. Um, and breakfast burritos are really forgiving. You could add other things, less things, if you want to make these vegetarian, if you want to make them really meat heavy, if you want to add in like some green onions, um, some onion onions, whatever. Whatever you could think to put in an omelet would be okay to put in this burrito. Mm -hmm. Now these are really good in the air fryer, but 
we didn't mention that because we're assuming that you didn't bring your air fryer camping or on vacation. I am a bit of a princess when I go in my trailer and I do sometimes bring my Roomba <laughs> because there, in my old trailer I did because there was a lot of sand. In my new trailer, I have a vacuum. And so I don't have to bring my Roomba anymore, but I certainly don't bring my air fryer. But they are nice to have in the air fryer. I throw them in the microwave for like a couple of minutes and then a couple of minutes in the air fryer and let it crisp up. And oh, it's good, it's good. Some other holidays that we've gone on many, many years ago, and it's time to go again, is we've gone houseboating, where you get a group of people together and you go and spend a week on a houseboat. We go to the shoe swaps because that's the closest ones to us, which are still pretty far away. Um, beautiful area, wonderful place to go. And so we had a very good system where we had, okay, so we had a mom I mean, it's my friend Anne Marie, but she was the one who organized everything. And so she made a schedule and she's like, okay, this is your meal that you're responsible for. And this is the meal that you're responsible for cleaning up. Smart. And everybody had a schedule. We knew before we ever left what all we had to bring. And I wasn't making freezer meals at the time. In fact, I went on my honeymoon on a houseboat with my bestie, Anne Marie. I have another bestie. She knows it's okay. Um, I'm good with it. She, she's mad at her. They're great. Um, and so we uh, we were going on the houseboat anyway. And so when we got married, I'm like, well, let's just go there. That'll be our honeymoon. And it was really nice. And there was ten of us. There was no kids, obviously, not obviously, but it was uh, it was good. And we had a schedule, and everybody stuck to it pretty good. So that is a tip for you. You need to have an Anne Marie in your group that is willing to step up and say, we're doing a schedule and everybody's gonna clean, and this is your part. And then it's not so overwhelming, is it? And you're not stuck with dinners every time. And then you know ahead of time who's making what and what ingredients to bring, I like So it. what you could do, if I was doing this now, is I would join the club. Down below there's a link for our membership club. And what it will do is allow you to make a meal plan, and then it'll give you all the ingredients, and then it will give you um, a shopping list, with the ingredients and then a prep list and all the labels of how to cook them. So you have a little Zoom chat because we have the technology. We weren't doing that 20 years ago when we we're getting married, but <laughs> you got a little Zoom chat and say, okay, who's responsible for which meals? What would you like to do? And you could have your little freezer meal session before I say Zoom chat because she lives in Saskatoon. But if you're going with the people that are in your community, do it in your house. <laughs> Um, but then you could just divvy up or you could all get together and make all your meals ahead of time and then you freeze them and then you just throw them in the cooler and they will make it from here to the shoe shops. No problem. Yeah, we just pack our cooler when we're going to the mountains and the meals stay frozen. It's about like a six and a half, seven hour drive depending on if we stop and depending on traffic, you know, all the things. Um, but they are still frozen when we arrive and I just transfer them to the freezer there and then I still have the beauty of freezer meals and not having to cook, not having to think about what to make when I'm there and then it feels more like a vacation for me, even though most of the time I'm working from there, but this time I'm not. This time oh, I'm taking like at taking least three days off. off. <laughs> this is kind of unprecedented. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if I can even stand it. <laughs> I'm really good at taking time off. I'm going to the totally opposite direction and I'm helping my mother get settled in in her new home at the Seniors Lodge. She's going to be really thrilled about that. <laughs> It'll be okay. We'll make it okay. And I'll take her some meals. Absolutely. I'll take her some little individual meals to help her get settled in. Ooh, we should put a link right there Ooh. to a recent video we did of freezer meals for one because we often do meals for one whether it's for our parents or my son one of my sons mm -hmm. um or for or, us for lunches yes. because you know we work from home and we don't want to eat the same thing every day we gotta eat too it's good this next recipe is more of a brunch for a crowd idea. So this is really great if you're going with other families and you might be feeding more than just your family and you might be taking turns with other families where they make some meals and you make meals too. So this is our country sausage and hash brown casserole and I, we made this in our mega session. I'm gonna put a video actually right there. Oh, we should. We did 153 meals. 
which was a record for us and a little shocking. It was no sweat, you know. It was only just three days of like prep and assembly and filming and we were tired. We were tired. But now we get to have like reap the fruits of our labor because our, I can just freezers are full. Grab out this country sausage and hash brown casserole. I can grab out a bunch of things for my husband for his camping trip. Like I this is easy. This next, you know, mountain trip. I'm just shopping from my freezer. It couldn't get any easier. So this one we want to mix up in a bowl first. So in a really large bowl, you're going to put a pound of garlic sausage that's been sliced and halved. So that's the, we call it kubasa here. I've heard that in some of the states it's kielbasa. Then we're going to add some frozen shredded hash browns, some melted butter, onion, diced green pepper, some cheddar cheese that's shredded, sour cream, a can of cream of mushroom soup, half a can of evaporated milk. So you might as well make two of these at a time so that you can use up the whole can and then you can have some in your freezer for the week after you get back from vacation when you're exhausted and don't wanna cook. A bit of Cajun seasoning and some pepper. You're gonna mix all that together, transfer it to a large freezer bag, take out the extra air because Air is what causes your freezer burn when you're freezer cooking. And then you're gonna freeze it. Now on the day that you go to cook this, you can thaw it and dump it into a very large greased casserole dish, bake it at 350 for 45 minutes. Now, I wanna give you two tips about this recipe. First tip is that you could instead mix this in a bowl and then pour it into like a disposable foil tray, one of those really, really large ones, cause this makes a lot. And then cover it with foil and freeze it. That would allow you to not have extra dishes to do on your vacation mm -hmm. and just take this as it is. So it would be one less step to do. The other tip I wanna give you about this recipe is that Christy and I both made this already since our mega session. So we made four, so we ended up with two each. So I've got one more left, so I'm taking it on this vacation. But we used one for, I think it might have been Father's Day, and Christy's already used one of hers. She found hers was like too mushy or like... It, it ended up going mushy, and I think it was because, first of all, I put it in a really deep dish. It wasn't spread out in a nine by 13. It mm -hmm. was in my Pampered Chef deep dish covered baker and it's it's tall, right? Like it's a mm -hmm. like a Dutch oven and it had a big lid on it. I did cook it for 45 minutes and then I took the lid off and gave it another 10, but it never really crisped up. And it when we when we put the spoon into it, it just kind of Hmm. It was it was a little mushy. The shredded potatoes. Most of our hash brown casseroles are made with the the chunky, diced, the yeah. diced potatoes, and this is the first one we've done with the shredded. And and so I think there's a better way to make it. So we found <laughs> that ours was really good. We liked it, and it was nice and crispy. But I had done mine in a really large casserole dish, and so it was more spread out, therefore a thinner layer and I had cooked mine uncovered the whole time. So very different. Right. This was a recipe we were playing around with, so we've kind of figured out the secret now. And the secret is uncovered. Uncovered. And in a big, because they really liked it, and I'm like, eh. So I am looking forward to trying my second one. And yeah. are you glad that we do two at a time? Absolutely. Even if it's a new recipe, just so we have a chance to fine tune and fiddle it with it. We test these before we send them out into the world, um, <laughs> as in putting them on the website, right? We want to make sure that they are enjoyable and that they taste good and they cook the way they're supposed to cook and that they can freeze. And, and we thaw. play around and we mm -hmm. have had some that didn't work. We've had some that were real winners and we've sort of had some in between where then we decided let's tweak this. There's this is something this is worth, worth salvaging. Mm -hmm. And but, this is totally one. The flavors are good. It was for me, it was a texture thing. And so, yeah, I'm glad I get another chance to do it again. This recipe is summer, 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 summer in a freezer bag. It is cowboy baked beans, 
Um, this one is great for camping. This one feeds a lot of people. I've started to use it as my go-to for potlucks. And again, if you were taking this on a group trip and you were in charge of one of the meals, this feeds so many people, easily eight people. Easily, and if you had cornbread or buns with this. And a little side like salad. 10 to 12 people. Bang, it is really delicious too. And it is one of the ones that my husband has specifically requested to bring on his camping trip, so he is. Yes, he's taking it along with him. Cowboy baked beans, we start out in our bag with a pound of ground beef that's been browned. We're gonna add in diced onion, diced green pepper, a little bit of minced garlic, a little bit of onion powder, um, here's where it gets heavenly. We're gonna add in eight slices of cooked and crumbled bacon. Um, we're also gonna add in a bit of brown sugar and four cans of baked beans. We're gonna add in a little bit of barbecue sauce and some Dijon mustard. There's a ton of flavor in here. This is not just, you know, your grandma's baked beans. This is a very good cowboy baked beans. We're going to remove that excess air. We're going to freeze it. And then on the day of cooking, you do have a couple of options. Everything in here really is pre-cooked. You just need to get your onions softened. So you could, if you needed to, do it in the skillet on the stove. If you are out for a hike and you wanna come back to it, you can throw it in your slow cooker. Or if you have a regular amount of time and you don't have a slow cooker in your trailer, I sometimes take mine. <laughs> um, then you could just do this in the oven and it's really delicious that way as well. Okay, we have talked a lot about Christie's glamping. And oh, it is so glamping. It is. Yes. I'm gonna put the video right there, not to our true camping freezer meals, but to that original camping mm -hmm. freezer meals where Christie takes you on the tour of her trailer. And I am wearing my all time favorite apron. That is, <laughs> it's, my mom bought it for me in Vienna when she was on a river cruise and it's it's the girl and she's got the yodel lady who, and, uh, <laughs> and, it has a little tear there and I should really sew it, but I've moved it to my camp, I've moved it to my trailer for camping. And the only time it's really ever awkward is when I'm wearing my bathing suit and wearing it because <laughs> it looks like that's all I have on. <laughs> but that's part of the fun of camping, right? <laughs> I hope that this helps you when you're planning your next vacation. Um, hopefully you've got a freezer stocked with freezer meals and you can just grab them out and enjoy your time with your family. Thanks for joining us today. Happy cooking. Bye.